Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So just following up with a couple more recognising assumption questions since a couple of people have mentioned um, about wanting to do a couple more of these. So these are just going to be some general recognising assumption questions with a mixture of both clause and non-clause that I thought I could talk through so this video will be a little bit shorter than normal. But yeah, so in terms of kind of general ideas, so should the number of university student places on arts and humanity courses be drastically cut? Okay, so this is quite clearly a non-clause question and here it's important they're asking if they should be drastically cut. OK, so A says they're not academically rigorous. OK, so I would rule that out because it narrows the scope to academic rigor. OK, um, that's not the only reason for why a, you, you do a university course. Yes, because the country does not need people with arts backgrounds. Once again, um, just because um, this this is kind of like a generic statement, right? Like so there's, they're not offering any kind of reason for why they might not need people. OK, so it's just a statement that has no backup behind it, essentially. OK, um, and also, if they are saying that it should be cut, that means there'll still be some people who are left behind still doing arts. But then why would you need to cut it if the country doesn't need people with arts backgrounds? Right. It really doesn't make any sense. It would be better to just completely get rid of it as opposed to drastically cut. So that that one doesn't really make sense in my idea, in my head. C says no, because otherwise all the art lecturers will be without work. Once again, it narrows it to just the art lecturers. The question is about university students. OK, um, and so therefore, if you look at D, D says many students benefit from the transferable skills they teach. OK, so D is the one I think that makes the most sense here um, because the other ones don't really um, fit the question that well. So should most students regard going to university as preparation for life and a time to acquire useful transferable skills rather than providing vocational training for a particular job? OK, so A says most university courses are not intended to equip students for a specific job, but rather to equip them for a wide um, range of possible jobs and lifestyles. OK, so one thing I would say is in terms of recognizing, you can see this one's going to be a little bit lengthier. Um, so it can take you a little bit longer to do this one as opposed to the other. So what, one thing I would potentially do is I potentially do some of the other recognizing assumptions questions first, then I'd come back to this one. Okay. So A says, as you said, not intend to equip, but for a specific job, but to equip them for a wide range of possible jobs and lifestyles. So it talks about the idea of useful, useful transferable skills. So I think A could be the answer. Okay. Um, because it's a thing about should most students, and it talks about most uni courses not being intended to equip. So yeah, A could be the answer. B says most students are living away from home and may learn to live independently, making their own decisions. That's true, but it's not really about, it doesn't really make, say anything about useful transferable skills. Okay. C says most people go to uni because they have a clear future career plan in mind and know exactly what they want to study and why. Okay. Once again, it doesn't really talk anything about the transferable skills um, or the vocational training idea side of, side of things. So it's not C. And then when we look at D, architects know they want to be architects and teachers know they want to be teachers. University is all about meeting specific vocational means. So I would just completely rule that one out because um, it talks about, it narrows it to architects and teachers and it says about, it's about meeting specific, specific vocational aims. But that's not necessarily true for uh, most people, right? There's no argument about that. OK, so I think A is probably the one that makes the most sense out of these. So you can see sometimes like it's not clearly obvious which the answer is unless you try and like rule out some of the others. OK, so whilst this argument is true of some of the specific vocational aims, it's not necessarily true for most people whose degree um, will meet their aims in general. OK, and then so what about this one? So would society be safe if urban areas had designated dog walking areas where pets could be exercised without causing danger to people? OK, so. I guess the important idea here is the causing danger to people. So A says it's better for dogs to live in towns, be exercised in separate areas so they cannot fight people and leave waste that could be harmful to children. Okay, so it mentions something about danger, so it could be A. B says it's important that dogs are properly exercised and ideally they should be allowed to free to run off without restriction. So it talks about the emphasis too much here is on the dogs getting their exercise as opposed to causing danger. C says it's the responsibility of dog owners and not local councils to find somewhere to exercise dogs safely away from people um, and from dangerous traffic. OK, so once again, I would say that it focuses um, on who should be providing the designated areas, right? It's saying, OK, listen, it's not the dog owners, it should be, uh, sorry, it's it's not the local council, it should be the dog owners. OK, that's cool, but that's not really what's being asked here. It's, it's about saying, OK, should there be a different place, right? So it doesn't really focus on the main idea of the passage. So no towns have built up areas already overcrowded and any undeveloped land should be used to provide new houses rather than playgrounds for pets. So... Once again, nothing about reducing danger and it narrows the feel like it focuses about housing, which could be a valid argument, but not really what we're looking for here. 
Okay, so I'd say A is the only one that really makes sense. Okay, so this one is actually a um, hidden clause question because it says, in ethical terms, should interest rates paid to savers be fixed at 2% below the rates charged to borrowers? Okay, so the idea here is the important thing we're looking for is something about ethics. So A says this will prevent some lenders from charging immoral rates of interest to borrowers, sometimes 10 or 20%, so, sorry, 10, 10 or 20 times what savers receive. Okay, uh, that could be true. Um, yeah, that, I can't see anything to immediately rule it out, essentially. So what about B? So B says savers should always receive uh, good interest rates because savers rely on their savings to produce a regular income for themselves. Okay, so it just talks about needing to be paid a regular income, nothing about ethics. So it's not B. C says high interest rates will encourage many people to save rather than spend, causing a fall in demand which will lead to firms going bankrupt or workers losing their jobs. Once again, could be a valid point, but it's not... Um, it, it focuses on, um, it doesn't really say anything about eth any of the ethical considerations. It focuses too much on the companies and workers. Um, so, and I guess also as well, it focuses too much on the saving idea of things instead of talking about borrowers as well. So no, since savers and borrowers are usually different people, there's no moral or practical reason why there should be any link between them. Um, it just kind of makes a blanket statement about, oh, there's no link between people but that's not necessarily always true um you can't just make a blanket statement so in one of my very first recognizing assumption videos i talked about how these kind of generic blanket statements are always going to be wrong so if you think about a i guess it does make sense because it says it says about charging immoral rates of interest so i kind of didn't um draw attention to that on purpose first time that i went around but you can see now it makes a lot more sense okay like now it fits a lot a lot more closely um the immoral rates of interest so therefore ethically this isn't right um so a um has to be the correct answer okay so th thank you very much for watching so i know this video is probably going to be a little bit shorter but it was just another follow-up in this series on recognizing assumptions and i hope that this all made sense as always thank you very much for watching please do keep the comments coming in and um, i do read the comments um, and i'll try to do my best to get back to you if you have any kind of pressing questions or matters but otherwise um, feel free to contact me um, in any of the um, contacts and um, addresses linked either in my bio um, or just in the description of this video. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next video.